the release of the, uh, the Taliban who were being held in Guantanamo uh, was conditioned on the Qataris keeping eyes on them and creating a structure in which we can monitor their activities. We will be keeping eyes on them. Uh, is there the possibility of uh, some of them trying to return to uh, activities that are detrimental to us? Absolutely. That's been true of all the prisoners that were released from Guantanamo. That's not sitting well with a lot of Americans. Now, despite the growing outrage surrounding the release of Sergeant Bergdahl's you know, questionable release, a hero's welcome was being planned in his hometown that's since been canceled. But as the White House tries to defend its position of trading terrorists to bring this soldier home, a growing number of soldiers who served alongside him are speaking out, suggesting this soldier may not have been a hero. Justin Gerlieb joins us from Silver City, City, New Mexico tonight. Great to have you here with us. Thank you. In, in your mind, Sergeant Bergdahl, I mean, does he deserve a, a hero's welcome? Because a rally that was planned in his hometown has since been canceled. Is that because of all the public outrage? Uh, possibly. Could. What I believe is it shouldn't be a, a hero's welcome. You know, the, the, what he did was he deserted his soldiers and he did it, deserted his, uh, you know, his country. He, he swore under oath, you know, to protect and defend, and he walked away. You know, it, it, that's not a heroic act. A, a heroic act is all the soldiers that, you know, got hurt and was spent countless days and hours searching for him to make sure that his safety was good and, and to try to make our country a safer place. You speak from experience because you served in Afghanistan alongside him. Uh, I'm not sure how well you knew him, but take us through some of the things that raised eyebrows amongst you as well as your colleagues. Um, as far as... You know the stories that he's been that that people are saying and and everything that he talked about as far as you know going he he wanted to go walk the mountains and he wanted to walk to India um, that that was an an eyebrow raiser as well as you know just a couple of days before us going out back out he was mailing you know a lot of his stuff back you know he was mailing computers um, talking to his his dad on the internet the email. Stuff like that is going to be the eyeball razor of what razor, excuse me, of what you know what happened. And what there was there are suggestions that that this soldier may have been chatting or trying to get in touch with members of the Taliban, and there are suggestions, not proven, of course, yet, that he may have met with the Taliban because all of a sudden attacks on American soldiers were becoming much more precise. Soldiers were getting hurt. Do you see any truth to that? Uh, yes, in a sense, I can't say that it, it was Bergdahl that made the exact, you know, contact with them to get everything. But it was the next day that, and a couple of days after of him being in Taliban's hands from, you know, our intel sources. After that, um, our the IED strikes have gotten, you know, they were pinpointed on the trucks of where they need to be. Um, direct attacks, you know, were, were timely, a lot better, a lot more organized. Uh, just in, in those little facts right there, I mean, that type of stuff, in a military sense, does not change overnight like how they did. In, in um, your then opinion, again, I, I can't say it's linked to actual Bergdahl, but it kind of raises the suspicions and and throws the question out there. In, in your opinion, do you think that the president of the United States has uh, betrayed the military? Do you feel like he's put soldiers at risk? No, uh, I'm not here to um, you know to justify whether that's correct or not. What I want to do is I'm here to to tell the truth and, and tell America what happened that day and what happened, you know, just slightly after to show that Bergdahl was a deserter. You know, he did desert. He did leave our country and our soldiers behind. I've only got 20 seconds left. In your opinion, what will his uh, coming home be like? How will Americans treat him? You know, I have no idea, to tell you the truth. And that's why myself and other soldiers are starting to speak out to make sure that what he did and the way he deserted, he will be accountable for, for his actions. Yeah, well, I guess time will tell, and I think this story is far from over. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight, Justin. Yes, and thank you very much.